In today's video, I've got some very rare and old mutes from Salvatore Florio. What's going on everyone, Josh Rizupka here, and welcome back to another Mute Monday. If you're new around here, welcome. Mute Monday is a series where I discuss and demonstrate different trumpet mutes so you know what they're all about, and more importantly, what they sound like. Today, I am really very excited to be sharing with you mutes by S. Florio, Salvatore Florio. If you don't know who that is, well, don't worry, most trumpet players have never heard of him. These mutes are very rare, they were made a very long time ago, and there aren't that many of them left. However, I did manage to get a hold of three different examples of one of his mutes. Now, Florio, he made a bunch of different types of mutes. However, I've got the straight mute, and it's kind of like a straight soft mute. These were loaned to me, so a very big thank you to Michael Sachs, as well as Dave Prolikstein. Before I dive into all the history, the details, and the playing examples, I want to remind you I've got a free mute handbook, and if you haven't downloaded it yet, what are you waiting for? It's free. Click the link below, enter your email address, and I will send it directly to your inbox. It is filled with tips and tricks that will help elevate your mute game and get you sounding better while you're playing your mutes immediately. Now, as I mentioned, I have three mutes to play for you today and share with you. I'm gonna just call these mutes mute number one, mute number two, and mute number three. So let's check these mutes out up close. This first mute I'm gonna just refer to as mute number one. This is a nice red and tan color, as you can see. It is made out of a couple different materials. This is a fiber, uh, material that the mute is made out of and on the very bottom you can see there is a wooden resonator and if you look at the very top there's even a little metal ferrule inside uh, the opening on all of these mutes obviously these mutes were all handmade and these mutes were made in Brooklyn and I'm gonna guess they were made in the 1930s, 1940s. There isn't much information out there about Salvatore Florio, uh, but I'm gonna share what information I did find in just a minute. Now, let's check out mute number two up close. This one, as you can see, it is all red, and it is the same design as the other ones, but you can see it's a nice fiber material, and it's got that wooden resonator on the bottom. Now, I've got one more of these mutes. I'm gonna call this mute number three. Check this one out up close. A very nice design. Design. This one is more colorful. It's got a darker uh, uh, bottom on it. Now, as you can see, all three of these mutes were the same design. I don't really know why there were different colored materials. Uh, it may have just been what was available. It's really uh, impossible to say at this point. I did a lot of research to try and get to the bottom and figure out who is S. Florio. Now, there is not a lot of information about Florio, uh, but I did piece together uh, a little bit of a timeline and some information. He was a euphonium soloist. Early on in Florio's career, he played in the band of cornet virtuoso, Alessandro Liberati. He was most well known for writing the Kansas City Star March. That places Florio in his band in the early 1900s. The next instance that I was able to find of Florio was from an old musician's union journal, 1931 to 1933. Apparently he was in Cleveland playing with the Cleveland Philharmonic Band. And in 1931, he was a soloist in one of their concerts. In 1933, it has him listed as leaving the Musicians Union in Cleveland. And then check out their writing on the side of this mute. That's right, Brooklyn, New York. So. Florio must have moved to New York after he left Cleveland, and that is really the uh, the bulk of the information that's out there, as far as I know, on Salvatore Florio. Apparently, he was a renowned euphonium soloist, and he also played the valve trombone, but he made mutes, and he didn't just make trumpet mutes. He also made euphonium mutes and trombone mutes, but most people, they don't know what they are. They've never seen him, they've never even heard of Florio, but I did have a chance to talk to a handful of different people that gave me some insight and, and they kind of helped me to, to put together a little bit of a timeline. Where did people get these mutes? Who did they get them from? When did they get them? Because the mutes that I test in this video, they are really of very cool provenance. As I mentioned, these three mutes were loaned to me and these first two, they were loaned to me by Michael Sachs and they've got such an interesting story to them. One of these mutes was Louis Davidson's and then the other one, uh, he got through David Zouder, uh, I believe through the Ruby family. And then the mute that was loaned to me by Dave Frolikstein here in Chicago. That used to belong to trumpeter Manny Klein. 
So really very cool that I was able to get these mutes and play them. And in fact, the all red Florio, this one right here, that's the one that used to belong to Louis Davidson. It was actually used in 1941 in a recording of Shostakovich one, uh, third movement, you can you can hear it online. On the notes, I'm gonna put a link below so you can check that out. Now, there were a bunch of top orchestral trumpet players of the time that were using these Florio mutes. Bernard Edelstein, he had some Florio mutes that he got in the mid 1950s. And of course, from 1950 to 1960, he was playing in the Minneapolis Symphony. And then from 1960 to 1988, he was playing in the Cleveland Orchestra. And Clemente Volpe, he was good friends with Louis Davidson. And uh, he got a set of these mutes from him prior to joining the Minneapolis Symphony. These mutes were used in a recording of Scheherazade in 1959 with uh, Bernie Edelstein and Clemente Volpe. Apparently, Wilmer Wise had a couple of these mutes and Tom Couples of the National Symphony Orchestra. Uh, he's got a couple of these mutes that he got from Maxim Gershinov, and Maxim Gershinov got those mutes along with a trumpet from Harry Glantz. So some big names that were playing these Florio mutes. Now, as I mentioned, Florio didn't just make mutes for the trumpet. He also made them for trombone and euphonium. And uh, Alkovsky, former trombone of the Cleveland Orchestra, uh, he picked up some Florio mutes in the 1940s in Kansas City. And current trombone player in the Cleveland Orchestra, Rick Stout, apparently he's got some of these Florio mutes too. So they're still floating around. They were real popular, I guess, in Kansas City, in Cleveland, in Pittsburgh, in Minneapolis, New York. So they made the rounds, but uh, he must not have made very many of these mutes. I did a lot of searching online through a lot of old journals. There were very, very few advertisements. In fact, I believe this right here is the only advertisement that I was able to find. And this is when he was in Brooklyn, in New York. And that is where he ended up I believe at the end of his life, as far as I know, Florio passed away in 1951. There is not an obituary or any uh, sources really that I could find for this, uh, but that is the information that I was told. Now, I imagine there are more of these mutes that are out there that people don't even know what they are. So if you've got one, let me know in the comments below. I really want to uh, hear from you and know exactly which one of these you've got. All right, I think that's enough talking. Let's hear how these mutes sound. All right, so you've just heard all three of these mutes, and what did you think? Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, why don't you hit that like and subscribe button? It really makes a very big difference. Now, starting off with the red and tan mute, 
I gotta say, this is my favorite of all three. This is one of the ones from Saks. This is the one from the Ruby family. I've gotta say, this has got just such a nice articulation. It's got a great focus and core to the sound. The balance of the sound, really nice. From low to high, it plays great. I can understand why someone like Michael Saks would really love this mute. All right, now, mute number two, the all red Florio. This is the one that Sax got from Louis Davidson. I've got to say it wasn't as good as Mute 1. Down in the lower register, it didn't have the same immediacy and clarity to the articulation as that first mute did. Additionally, compared to that first mute, this was a little stuffier and you know the core just didn't pop as quickly as in that first mute. All right, now, mute number three, this one right here that used to belong to Manny Klein. I've gotta say, this one, it was a little brighter. The resonance and the core, it wasn't as quick. The articulation on this one, it was a little bit slower and a little bit heavier than those first two mutes. And overall, this one, it just didn't feel as focused. Also, I will say that the uh, tuning slide, I had to adjust more on this one. I had more intonation difficulties with this mute compared to the other two. However, the corks on these, I didn't adjust and, and mess with any of the corks on these. These were all loaned mutes and they all fitted in my bell a little bit different than if they were my own mutes and I would be adjusting them for my trumpet. But really, I just love the history of these mutes, the fact that I was able to uh, get these mutes and play them for you. So again, a very big thanks to Michael Sachs and to Dave Frolikstein for loaning these mutes to me so that I could make this video. And also, I've got to give a shout out to Tom Couples and Christopher Volpe because uh, I spoke with a lot of different people while I was researching these mutes so that I could try and put together this timeline of who Florio was, when he made the mutes, where he made them, where he was. And uh, there's still some gaps to the story, but uh, I'm sure I will find out more. The fact that so many top orchestral trumpet players out there in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, they were playing these mutes and they loved them. Uh, that says a lot. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.